a YouTube new director's take called Empowering Tanks in the Mid-Season. So I'm not going to waste any time and jump straight into it, and then we're going to talk about it. This is from Aaron Keller, so you know, like the big boss, the Han Show, is telling us that, hey everyone, I'm glad to see all of you digging into Season 10. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. We have loved seeing you. Welcome our newest hero venture and enjoy the Mirror Watch event available in the arcade. However, this week we're going to be looking ahead to our mid-season update. So that's actually coming this coming week. As we discuss some changes we have on the way for the tank role. <clears throat> in Overwatch 2, tanks are the most imposing heroes. Well, are the imposing heroes, excuse me, who take the brunt of the fight while enabling their teammates to secure eliminations. While tanks are big targets for opponents to focus upon, many team comps aim to burn down a tank's HP quickly. Or they get moved around a lot from displacement abilities. We receive feedbacks that tank can either feel like they get taken down way too fast, or they're impossible to take down just in general. So our mid-season update is going to help balance many hits, how many hits a tank can take to stay in the fight better. Firstly, we're specifically buffing the tank passive to have a 25% damage reduction from headshots. Oh, so that is very... Whoa, that's actually very interesting. So which should help cut down on being burst out in a fight. We're also increasing the knockback resistance for tanks from 30% to 50%. Oh, that's ridiculous. So tanks are going to be really hard to boop around now. Which would also allow them to hold the front line a lot more and not feel as subjected to displacement abilities. Okay, so this is very interesting. This is a very powerful buff. This this might make certain tanks a little bit too broken. I mean, like, oh my god, like this the the this 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 might be a very scary change actually. Like this will help some tanks that need it, but I don't know if all the tanks need this. Like this on Roadhog and Orisa is gonna be stupid, in my opinion. We're also we're also making some gameplay changes that impact tanks. One is that we're reverting the armor damage reduction back to reducing 5 damage per projectile with up to a 50% maximum. This means heroes like Reaper or Tracer will have to do more to take down characters like Reinhardt. Dude, what? Reaper's like shit anyway. Like, I'm sorry, but like using Reaper as an example here is such, a, is such an oversight given that the hero is in such a bad spot and generally needs help. And anything that he does, Tracer and a bunch of other characters already do it better than him. And he, and he struggles to have a place in the game. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, this that, like this is going to feel really good on Reinhardt for sure. And other armor-heavy characters. So, Orisa's going to really like this. I think... I think... Who else, like, has a lot of armor? I can't think of anybody else on top of my head. But Winston might like something like this quite a bit too. Um, heroes with high burst damage per projectile will still be effective. But these kind of tanks have a better mean to counterplay that type of damage. So this is like specifically to help brawl, brawl tanks, right? So brawl tanks should definitely feel tankier. This is really interesting. So I don't know, man. Again, like so far these changes I'm reading, I'm just having PTSD and thinking about how powerful Orisa can be. Like, again, this is meant to help characters like Ryan and maybe Ramatra. But I don't know, man. Like the, the fact that I'm, I, I have so much PTSD from Orisa this past season. I don't know. Anyways, so moving on, they say the following. So it says over here, next we made a light change to our overall HP recovery passive that will enable mobile tanks to get back to the front lines faster. Wait, what? Next we made a light change to our overall HP recovery passive that will enable mobile tanks to get back to the front line faster. The health regeneration passive for all heroes will no longer recover 20 HP per second out of combat, but instead recover 10 health plus... 5% of your max HP. So sustainability as a concept just saw a, ma a huge buff. Is that really the direction we want to go down? Like, we're, is, aren't we like kind of going back to the same problem that we're supposed to get away from? Like when we introduced like the bigger HP pools and the DPS passive, like now we're like finding ways to, okay, well, no, we want you, I don't know. Like, I, I guess I want, I want to have a feel for this because obviously saying, Something without feeling it and playing it is really silly, but at at first glance, I'm 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 cautious. I guess I can say I'm cautious. This means a hero like Reinhardt will recover his HP at forty five health a second in a roll queue match. I mean that's a, that that's nice, I guess. Altogether, these changes should have an impact on some pain points within our tank players that are what they are experiencing as well as the balance of the game. I have a feeling we'll see a lot of movement in the meta over the remainder of season ten. I mean, the meta is kind of all over the place, but Maogo is definitely, like, becoming really strong right now. In some individual changes, Jungle Queen is getting a buffed commanding shot, which will be activated if even if you're channeling other abilities like Carnage or Rampage. And his cooldown is getting reduced to 12 seconds. This change will allow it to be more engaged in intense fights where you need to charge in more quickly. Oh, I don't, I don't even think Jungle Queen was that bad. I thought, I, I think, like, just 
Like, there's some tanks, like Roadhog, Malga, they're a little bit overtuned, and if they go down, Queen can actually see a lot of places. She's, she's really not that bad, and to be honest, like, she's really high skill. Like, you, ha you have to be really good at doing a lot of different things to get value on her. So she's just, like, a little bit on the harder side to play, but I, I didn't think Junker Queen was that bad or needed a buff, but it's, it's welcome, like, it's okay. With Wrecking Ball, we're seeing some creative play with changes to his Grappling Claw. However, his ability to contribute to the fight is getting a small buff. The impact damage from a full charge swing using Grappling Claw is getting increased to 50 to 60. Oh, that's very nice. Pile Driver is increasing the enemy movement block off from 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. No, I do not like that. No, that's really bad. I really don't like that. And finally, Minefield will be a little bit more threatening with explosion damage increased from 130 to 165 and the knockback increase from 5 to 10. Oh, this started off really nice, but I don't know about all of this. Oh, this is the biggest problem with them. Like, they make a few good changes, they get ahead of themselves, and then they blow something up. Oh, okay. Again, I, I want to play it, but it's, I'm cautious. Additional changes coming from mid-season include some light buffs for Junkrat, Echo, and Hanzo. Why? Echo's fine, though. I mean, Junkrat and Hanzo, I fully agree. And I think Genji and Symmetra should have gotten a buff, too. But Echo? Echo's not that bad. Echo's really good. I don't know. I, I, maybe it's a duplicate. Like, okay, don't touch anything but duplicate. That's that's my opinion. Like, I think duplicate needs a buff. Now, imagine if her stickies, if her stickies get buffed, that's going to be scary. But we'll reveal those when you can jump in and take these changes for a test drive when the mid-season patch arrives on May 14th. Ah, so it's coming two weeks from now. No, it'll come one week from now, actually. Like, one week and two days. That's all for this week. Thanks for reading. Let's make a great game. Guys, there's so much to take away from this. I there's so much to talk about. I don't even know I didn't even know what to talk about anymore. I think these changes are really nice and will address a lot of problems within the tank world. Like, it's not gonna solve the counter watch problem. Like, look, I, I'm gonna say one thing, right? If you're playing tank, you just have to accept the fact that it's gonna be counter watch almost forever in 5v5. Like, I think the only time it maybe won't be fully counter watch is if you're in a brawl meta. And each of the Brawl tanks has like a strength and a weakness that any other Brawl tank can either exploit or take advantage of. I don't know. And, then, and you know what? Like, unfortunately, for as long as we stay in 5v5, that's just how it's going to be for the tank role. But at least we can help the role feel better from the POV of just immediately blowing up, right? Because the DPS passive is back to 20%. But to be honest, all these changes, like, they technically remove that impact of the 20% DPS passive. Like, if they get. 25% damage reduction from headshot. Like, Hog is really hard to kill. The fact that he didn't say anything about nerfing Hog is really concerning. I really, really hope the mid-season patch is, like, really big. Because I do think characters like Sim and Genji really need help. Mercy needs a lot of help. So Symmetra, Genji, and Mercy need a lot of help, too. Like, they're already doing Junk and Hanzo, so I can't talk about it. I don't know. I'm willing to see what they cook up, but I'm scared. Like, and not to mention, they did gut her venture out of nowhere. I, I, I really do think they, there's an oversight, like there's a bit of an issue with the balance team right now. They, 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 they're overdoing some things that don't need to be overdone. Like, Venture was a very like, situational character, and then they gutted, her for no, uh, gutted them sorry, excuse me, for no reason. And now Wrecking Ball, like Wrecking Ball just needed a little bit help. And then they're like, oh, you know, you know what, we're going to give him a little bit help. And then we're going to put this, and this, and this, and this. And it's like, dude, 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 slow down, slow down. Let's, let's do it one thing at a time. <laughs> What's going on here? You know? Because Wrecking Ball is really frustrating to play against. Right? So this is the, this is the problem. Like, we have to be a little bit careful here. And I mean, the lockout time getting increased to 0 0.75, dude, that is scary. Like, that's almost a full second of you being unable to move. That means, and you know, he, like, Ball did get a buff where Minefield came on 9 a little bit faster. I don't know if that got reverted or not. Somebody can let me know in the comments. But I don't know, man. I like these changes, but at the same time, I'm scared. That's the best way for me to put it right now. I like these changes, but I'm scared. I think I think these these changes will be really good on tanks that need it. And then there's gonna be a group of tanks that seriously did not need this. Like I'm I'm just on top of my head, I'm thinking Orisa and Roadhog with all these changes are going to become so powerful. And we just got through the Orisa meta. I don't know, man. I don't know. This This is scary. This is scary. I don't know. I really want to hear what you guys think down below. Are these good changes? Are these bad changes? I applaud them for trying something new, but they should definitely be careful with how they go forward with these changes.
Anyways, everybody, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more, do stick around. I didn't get the chance to post the DPS passive video today. It will be coming tomorrow because I got a bit busy with exams. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.